here. Today we're going to do a beginner Inkscape tutorial on one of my favorite features in Inkscape, the Trace Bitmap Tool. This is a way to take a JPEG or PNG file and convert it to a vector format. So we're going to use a PNG file of a butterfly. It's pretty simple. It's just three colors, gray, yellow, and black. Uh, if you want to follow along, the image links will be below for the butterfly and this pattern. So we're going to do a couple of things today. First, we're going to use the trace bitmap tool and auto trace this into a vector format. Then we're going to change the colors. We're also going to use a PNG, use the Bezier tool and outline this because sometimes the trace bitmap tool doesn't work quite right if you have like a complex image. So we need to know how to do both ways. Then after that, we're going to insert a pattern, which is really cute into our butterfly. So let's get okay. started. If you don't know how to import your image into Inkscape, which I already have mine, we're going to come up here to file in the top menu, select import, find where you saved your image file. You can just go to the internet and save a file, save any picture you want. Today we used a file that has a transparent background just to make things easier, but you don't have to do that. Select your picture, open. I leave all of these presets the same. Press OK, and here we go. It just imported our picture. Now we don't need this, so I'm gonna delete that, but that's how you wanna import your PNG or JPEG. Okay, so let's select the image that we wanna convert. This is a PNG. We have trace bitmap opened up, trace bitmap, is under path and trace bitmap. We have a couple of menu items here. Single scan. This is mostly for black and white images. Um, we're going to use multicolor. In detection mode, you can go brightness, colors, gray, and auto trace. It's really slow. I tried to use it once and it crashed Inkscape and I had to close everything out. So beware when you use that one and save and save often. We're going to use colors today. Scans is four, so the amount of scans you use it depends on the amount of colors that are in your picture. We have four colors, so we're going to use four scans. Select Smooth, Remove Background, and Stack. We want to click on Live Updates here in the corner. You can update your preview and apply. So it doesn't look like anything happened, but we have our new vector image on top of our butterfly. So let's just drag that to the side here. Now how do we know which one is our vector and which one is our PNG? Let's come up here to the nodes tool, select it, and if you move your mouse over you'll notice an outline and if you click on it now all of your nodes appear. So this is your vector image. If you click on your PNG image there are no nodes. So this is your original and this is your vector file. So now here it is. That was super easy. This is so convenient and easy to use if you have a straightforward image. Okay, so now let's work on changing the colors, which is always going to drag our image over here. And to change the colors, let's select Edit Paths by Nodes. You want to select Inside. Make sure that you've selected inside the wing. Now these nodes popped up because now we've selected inside the wing. There we go. All right, so you can change any color. It's really cute. And if you want to change the body, we can change that too. Maybe yellow. Okay. Now go back to your selector tool. Press F1. So There's a shortcut to get to your selector tool. Now we've changed the colors. Pretty fun, so you can change any color that you want. It's really fun to do. And you can move your picture around and everything is good. Okay, now we're gonna go to the little bit more complex we're gonna trace using the Bezier tool. Okay, our image is a little bit small, so let's, let's make that a little bit bigger. We're gonna hit Control and Shift and drag our arrow down. So this is gonna resize it in proportion because if we just drag it then our butterfly is going to change shape and we don't want that. If you did something on accident, Control Z will backspace so that you can kind of 
fix your mistake, which is really convenient. Okay, so what we want to do is take our color level down so we can kind of see where we're tracing. So let's go to Object, Fill in Stroke, and Opacity to about 50%, that is going to work. Select your Bezier tool. What we want to do is zoom in using the plus key because we want to be pretty close. I'm moving my mouse around. You can move the page around by holding the center mouse button and just moving the mouse around. So that's really a convenient shortcut. So we want to start anywhere with our Bezier tool selected and our B spline path. So B spline is a really cool function if you don't really know how to use the um, Bezier tool, it kind of helps you make curves. You always want to come back to your starting point with your Bezier so you can make a closed path, okay? I'm going to delete that and let's get started. So we're going to select a point on our outline and we're just going to go all the way around. You just click your mouse where you want the point to be. When you come down here, we want to make this nice angle. You're going to hold shift and click in that corner and that's going to give us a straight line. And we're going to go around the head and we're coming back to another angle. So we're going to press shift, go into the angle and now we have another straight line. Okay guys, I'm just going to finish going around here and I'm going to speed this up. And I'll see you when I get there. When you come back to your starting point, be sure to connect the path so that everything is closed. Perfect. Let's hit F1 so we can go back to our selector tool. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see. So now as you see, we have our basic outline, okay? Perfect, so we don't want it to be filled in with this yellow color. So we're gonna come down here to the bottom corner, hit X, that's gonna take out the fill color, but we do still wanna see our outline. So right here, you wanna hit Shift and color black. And that's going to show us our stroke. I can't see mine, so I'm going to just bring it up a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, I can see it now. If you want it to be bigger, hit right click and increase the size of your stroke here. All right, so we did the basic outline, but we still need to go around the wings. So let's do the same thing we did from the outside. We're going to go around the wings. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, hitting the plus key, and select our Bezier tool. Start in the corner and go around. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. All right, and now we're going to move over and do the other wing. Okay, we're going to do the same thing around the body of the butterfly. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Now for this one, we already have nodes here. So what we want to do is come up to this little arrow in the top right corner and select Enable Snapping. So that's going to let us connect over here to some of these nodes so we can get a nice straight line, okay? So let's go back to our Bezier tool. So now that I'm close to a node, it tells me the handle to cusp node. So I can start there. Now let's go around. And it's just going to kind of give us a nicer line. And come back to your starting point. There we go. Same thing with the antennas. Though they're really thin, so you want to zoom in close so you can get everywhere. If you need to turn off the enable snapping, go ahead and do that now. And let's do this one as well. Let's 
to zoom out, we have everything traced. All right, so hit F1. That's gonna go back to our selector tool. Now what we're gonna do is select our lines so that we can move this out of the way so you can see. So select your outline, then come in and select your wing, select the body, don't forget the other wing, and both of your antennas. Okay, when you have all of these selected, we can just go ahead and drag this to the side. Okay, look at our butterfly, doesn't it look good? Okay, here's our original. Let's take the opacity back up so we can use these colors and fill in our butterfly. All right, let's start with the center. Well, this is kind of a gray color. So let's come over here to our color dropper tool. First, make sure that you select whichever, whichever area that you wanna fill in. Pick your color dropper tool and pick the color. And boom, you filled it in. Okay, hit F1 to go back to your selector and select that wing color dropper and select the color. Hit F1, select the other wing, and select the other color. You're almost done already. Select your outside line, color dropper, and the black color. F1, let's zoom in so we can kind of see what we're doing with these antenna. So right now they are still an outline if you want to select and do both of them at the same time, select one, press shift, and select the other one. So we can do them both at the same time. I'm going to zoom out a little so I can see the other antenna. Our color dropper tool and select. There we go. Okay, so now F1 again, zoom out a little bit. Now this is a vector image of your PNG file. Perfect, it looks really good. We do have an outline here that you can get rid of. See this outline? So what we wanna do is come over here, hold Shift and X. Now we've gotten rid of our outline if you don't want it. If you want it or your image is already black, it doesn't really matter. Or you can change the color hold shift and you don't know if you can really see it but I've changed my outline to burgundy. You can make that outline bigger by hitting the right mouse key and coming up and making it larger if you need the outline. Hold shift and X to remove your outline. So that was fun. So the next thing we're going to do is actually insert a pattern into our vector image. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to select the image, press Control Shift and drag it so I can make it bigger. All right, looks nice. Okay, what we want to do is draw a box around the whole thing. And we're just going to group this together. Press Control G. Now everything is together, okay? I'm going to move this down to where my pattern is. And let's zoom in with the plus button. All right, so now I'm gonna ungroup everything since I just grouped it together. This pattern is a PNG, so let's quickly change it to a, to a vector. We're gonna use single scan this time because it's just black and white. Our picture looks pretty good. Changing the threshold is going to change how your image is view so you just want to check everything a good thing is just to leave it around 5.5 and apply move your image off to the side the way that you know if yours is a vector or not you can either zoom in when you zoom in really really close your png looks blurry on the borders here but your vector looks nice and smooth. Okay, so that's another way. So there's two ways that you can really tell. The other one is by selecting Edit Paths by Nodes, and now you see all of your nodes. But 
there are no nodes on your PNG. So let's okay. change the direction of this. I'm going to select it again, then I'm just going to drag this rotation here. There we go. So we're going to put this on top of our picture. Right now it's underneath. So we're going to come up here to these um, layering tools and we're going to bring ours to the top. And it's a little bit small, so let's hold Control Shift and resize that. A little bit more. This is such the fun part. So now what we want to do is select our wing, hold Shift, select our pattern. We want to make sure that we get them both selected. Select our wing. Okay, now we got our wing. Sometimes it's a little tricky. So we got our wing selected, hold shift and select our pattern. We're going to object, clip, and set clip. There we go. Looks good. So let's practice undoing so that we can make a, make a duplicate and then use it on the other side as well. So control Z is just going to bring that back out. We're going to select our pattern. Control D, now we've duplicated it, just move it off to the side. Now select your wing. There we got the wing selected. Hold Shift, select your pattern. Go to Object, Clip, Set Clip. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to rotate this just a little bit. Turn it just a little bit. Very good. And let's drag it over the other wing. Select your wing. There, we got it selected the first time. Hold shift and select your pattern so we have both of them selected. Object, clip, and set clip. Now we've done it. We've put a pattern in our image. We can select everything because they're all separated right now. Just to make sure that everything is a path, go to object to path. So everything is a path, that means it's all in vector format. So it can easily be used in silhouette or design space for your Cricut machine. And we're going to say Control G to group everything together. Now you can move it all, all together. Alright guys, I hope you felt like this tutorial was uh, useful and see you next time.